100 years ago how many subatomic particles were known to mankind the electron the proton and maybe if you include the photon these are the particles that were known almost 100 years ago but in these 100 years we have studied extensively particles like neutrons pi mesons muon particles tau particles sigma particles omega particles xi particles lambda particles and on and on and on we have found out that there are indeed hundreds and hundreds of subatomic particles out there and associated with these hundreds of subatomic particles is a huge diversity of particle interactions so we have hundreds and hundreds of particles out there and hundreds and thousands of particle interactions or reactions or particle decays however you may want to call them so you end up getting a chaos of a diversity of particle interactions so it becomes very important for us to understand or seek whether or not there are rules associated with these kind of particle interactions and as it turns out based on studies of a large number of particle interactions in the last 50 to 100 years scientists have found that we can associate certain numbers or quantum numbers with a certain class of particles that remain conserved whenever particle interactions happen now we already know about conservation laws like energy linear momentum angular momentum and uh, electronic charge etc etc apart from those conservation laws as it turns out when we are talking about interactions of elementary particles then those interactions happen in such a manner that we can associate a certain set of numbers namely the lepton quantum number the baryon quantum number and the strangeness quantum number which as it turns out is conserved in certain kinds of interactions and understanding that will give us an idea about what kind of particle interactions are allowed in nature what happen in nature and which of them do not happen in nature so in a way in this chaos of different kinds of particle interactions you will have a little bit of an idea of which of them are allowed which of them are not allowed you will get a little bit of a confidence in this whole chaos of particle interactions so that is what i'm going to talk about today in this video so let us first talk about uh, the lepton quantum number so the lepton quantum number is a number that we can associate with particle interactions that involve lepton particles now what are lepton particles these are elementary particles that do not experience the strong force essentially they consist of six particles the electron the muon particle tau particle and their associated neutrinos the electron neutrino muon neutrino and the tau neutrino so there are six particles and their antiparticles which comprise the lepton particles now if you are interested in knowing more about leptons and their properties i have made a video discussing leptons extensively you can check out that particular video here i'm going to talk about particle interactions that involve these lepton particles so the lepton particles either induce some kind of a particle reaction or they are the result of some kind of a particle decay now as it turns out whenever these particle interactions are taking place we can associate a number with these lepton particles such that it turns out that these numbers when added together before and after the interaction takes place remains conserved so before i talk about a couple of particle interactions let me first define uh, the values of these numbers okay so i have three numbers the electron lepton number associated with the electron family the muon lepton number associated with the muon family and the tau lepton number associated with the tau family each distinct from one another and we can associate values of one minus one or zero for all particles okay so as it turns out the electron lepton number has a value of one for the electron 
It has a value of 1 for the electron neutrino, but it has a value of minus 1 for their antiparticles. So it has a value of minus 1 for the anti electron and it has a value of minus 1 for the anti electron neutrino. All right, let me repeat it again. The lepton number for the electrons has a value of 1 for the electron as well as the electron neutrino but it has a value of minus 1 for the anti electron as well as the anti electron neutrino while it has a value of 0 for all other particles. Similarly, we can associate a muon number which has a value of in the same way 1 for the muon particle and the muon neutrino but it has a value of minus 1 for the anti muon particle and the anti muon neutrino all right and it has a value of 0 for all other particles similarly the tau number can have a value of 1 for the tau particle and the tau neutrino but it has a value of minus 1 for the anti tau particle and the anti tau neutrino while it has a value of 0 for all other particles so even though these three numbers are distinct from one another their values could be similar 1 0 minus 1 right 1 for the particles minus 1 for the antiparticles and 0 for everything else right so for the electron lepton number you have 1 for the electron and the electron neutrino minus 1 for the anti electron and the anti electron neutrino 0 for all others similarly for the muon lepton number and the tau lepton number now we can use these numbers in different kinds of particle interactions to see that they do indeed remain conserved okay so here is a bunch of uh, particle interactions that do happen in nature which involve lepton particles and based on what we just now discussed let's see if we can uh, associate the lepton numbers that i talked about in these reactions and see whether or not they are conserved okay so let's first start with uh, this reaction here or this interaction which is nothing but the negative beta decay reaction in which case a neutron becomes a proton leads to the emission of an electron or the beta particle and an electron anti neutrino in the process now this uh, interaction involves electron and electron anti neutrino right so in this case i'm only going to look at the lepton number for electrons or the electron number right so what is the electron lepton number for a neutron and a proton they are nothing but zero all right for all other particles they are zero right remember but for the case of an electron it is one for the case of an electron anti neutrino it is minus one now these quantum numbers are additive in nature additive in the sense that you can add these quantum numbers in the left hand side and the right hand side and you can see whether or not that particular summation is conserved or not so in the left hand side the lepton quantum number has a value of zero on the right hand side it has a value of one minus one which is nothing but zero that means in this case this is conserved right now let's go ahead to the next interaction which is the positive beta decay in which case a proton becomes a neutron leads to an emission of a positron which is an anti electron and also an electron neutrino in the process so if i look at the same electron lepton number for a proton and a neutron they turn out to be zero right but for the case of an anti electron it has a value of how much you remember minus one yes but for the case of electron neutrino it has a value of plus one right again left hand side it has a value of zero right hand side the summation of these two numbers has a value of zero that means the lepton quantum number for the electrons in this case is conserved right let's go ahead to the next so this is a case of a decay involving a pi meson so free pi mesons can decay into muon particles and lead to the emission of a anti muon neutrino this interaction does not involve either electrons or electron neutrinos but it involves muons and muon neutrinos right so we are going to look at the muon number in this case okay so what is the muon lepton number for a pi meson it is zero what is it for a muon particle plus one remember and what is it for a muon anti neutrino it is minus one 
again muon lepton numbers are additive that we look at the sum on the left hand side and the right hand side so on the left hand side is a value of 0 right hand side is a value of 1 minus 1 0 again the muon lepton number is conserved now what happens to a muon particle once it is formed a free muon particle can decay into an electron electron anti neutrino and a muon neutrino now this kind of an interaction involves both the uh, particles from electron family as well as from the muon family so we need to check them separately because i told you that the electron number the muon number and the tau number they are distinct and we need to check their conservation separately so first we will check their conservation associated with the electron lepton number and then we will check the conservation associated with the muon lepton number so what is the electron lepton number for a muon particle it's zero Right. What is the electron lepton number for an electron particle? It's plus 1. For an electron anti neutrino, it's minus 1. For a muon neutrino, it's 0. Right. It is conserved. Left hand side 0. Right hand side summation of 1 minus 1 comes out to be 0. Now let's look at the muon lepton number. What is the muon lepton number for a muon particle? It's 1. What's the muon lepton number for an electron particle? It's 0. What's the muon lepton number for an electron anti neutrino? It's 0. And what's the muon lepton number for the muon neutrino? It's 1. It's conserved, right? Left hand side 1, right hand side 1. So these quantum numbers are additive. That means you can add them on the right hand side as well as on the left hand side and you can check for their conservation now once you get to know about the electron lepton number muon lepton number it gives you an idea about what sort of interactions are possible and what sort of interactions are not possible because sometimes in examinations you are asked questions about uh, okay complete this particular particular reaction or tell us whether or not this reaction is possible or not possible and once you get an idea about this then you can get an idea about which of the reactions are possible and even predict which particle is going to involve. So let me give you an example. I am sure that every time you studied beta decay, you were confused at one point whether along with the electron, an electron anti-neutrino was emitted or an electron neutrino was emitted. I am sure most of you were confused at some point. So in this case, if an electron is emitted along with an electron anti-neutrino, you get one and one lepton number which remains conserved right but is this reaction possible can an electron be emitted with an electron neutrino because if an electron is emitted with an electron neutrino the lepton number will be plus one and plus one in both cases left hand side zero right hand side plus one plus one equals two violation of the conservation of lepton quantum number it's not possible this reaction does not happen this is not allowed in nature so electron will never be emitted along with the electron neutrino but it will only be emitted along with the antiparticle of the electron neutrino so the antiparticle of the electron neutrino is this which is a lepton quant number of minus one this reaction is possible same for the case of muon and the anti muon neutrino right and whenever one of these particles like muons decay in that case on the other side you can have a muon neutrino because in that case the quantum number remains conserved so i hope that this gives you a little bit of a clue as to what kind of particles are involved because as a student even i got confused uh, in the examination when i used to think like okay with the electron will the electron neutrino be emitted or the electron anti-neutrino this is something really confuses you right so once you understand this now it makes sense Along with the electron, always an electron antineutrino is emitted. Along with the muon, always an N muon antineutrino is emitted. Right? Same with the positron. Along with the positron, an uh, electron neutrino is emitted. Right? Let's go ahead to the next interaction. The tau particle can decay under certain situations into a pi meson and a tau neutrino. So we will only look at the conservation of the tau lepton number, which is L tau now what is l tau for the tau particle it's one what is l tau for the pi meson is zero and for the tau neutrino it's one conserved right left hand side one right hand side one the tau lepton number is conserved and the last interaction i have is the tau particle can sometimes also decay into an electron electron antineutrino and a tau neutrino again here we have two family of particles electrons and the tau particles right so we need to check their conservation separately so first we will look at the lep electron lepton number which has a value of zero for the tau particle one for the electron minus one for the electron antineutrino and zero for the tau neutrino and then we have to check for the 
tau lepton number which is a value of what 1 for the tau particle 0 for the electron 0 for the electron anti neutrino and 1 for the tau neutrino again as you can see these numbers are conserved in the left hand side and the right hand side so as it turns out when we associate the electron family the muon family and the tau family with these distinct lepton numbers the electron number the muon number and the tau number then it turns out that these quantum numbers are conserved in different kinds of particle interactions involving these particles so in a way this gives you a set of rules that will help you get an idea about what kind of particle interactions are possible what kind of particle interactions are not possible so lepton quantum number is always conserved except maybe in neutrino oscillations so in neutrino oscillations lepton quantum number is not conserved as a particle goes from one point to another but apart from that in almost all other particle interactions the lepton quantum number is conserved so this gives you a very helpful tool in sorting out different kinds of particle interactions now let's move ahead to the next quantum number which is the baryon quantum number so the baryon particles are essentially particles that consist of three quarks now remember i talked about leptons as those elementary particles that do not experience the strong force now as opposed to leptons there is a class of particles called hadrons which are particles that do experience a strong force and the hadrons can be further classified into what is called baryon particles and meson particles so baryons and these meson particles belong to a category called hadrons i have talked in detail about these particles in one of my earlier videos if you're interested you can check that out so as it turns out these baryon particles whenever they are involved in some kind of a particle interaction then we can associate a similar kind of a number with them such that that particular number its summation remains conserved whenever particle interactions happen so a very simple rule is as follows so all baryons so baryons are basically like new neutrons protons lambda particles omega particles sigma particles xi particles etc right so it consists of the nucleon particles as well as the hyperon particles which consist of three quarks essentially okay they do not include the mesons mesons basically have two quarks in them so they do not include the mesons they only include the baryons which in basically include three quarks inside them so all the baryons have a number of equal to one that we can associate with them this is called the baryon number represented by the capital b and the anti baryons like the anti neutron the anti proton as well as the anti particle version of the rest can be associated with a number of minus one while the rest of the particles can be associated with zero so plus one minus one and zero for the baryons anti baryons and for the rest we can associate with these particles and look at their conservation in different particle interactions so the baryon number essentially of one basically comes out as a result of the quarks okay so we can also say that the quarks have a baryon number of one by three while the anti quarks have a baryon number of minus one by three okay so because baryons are made up of three quarks so one by three plus one by three plus one by three come out to be equal to one while mesons on the other hand are made up of a quark anti quark so baryon number of 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 comes out to be 0. So mesons have a baryon number of 0, baryons have a baryon number of plus 1. Let's look at a few interactions, okay? So here again I have this uh, interaction which is the beta decay interaction. So a neutron becomes a proton leads to the emission of an electron and an electron anti neutrino. So if I look at the baryon number here, so the neutron and a proton are baryon particles, so they have a value of 1 each, alright? the other two have a value of zero so as you can see the left hand side is a baryon number of one right hand side is a baryon number of one so this number remains conserved right so if there's a baryon particle on the left hand side there must be a baryon particle on the right hand side in certain kinds of high energetic reactions a proton and a neutron may uh, collide under extreme uh, energy and lead to the creation of new particles like this so let's look at this kind of a reaction so the baryon number for a proton and a neutron is equal to one right on the right hand side you have a proton and a neutron and a proton and an anti proton which has a value of minus one so what is the value of baryon number left hand side one plus one two 
on the right hand side you have 1 plus 1 plus 1 3 minus 1 2 so 2 2 that means this number is conserved in this kind of a particle interaction now as it turns out baryon number is a kind of a quantum number that is conserved in different kinds of particle interactions so getting an idea about this number will give you an idea about uh, which of the reactions are possible or not possible whenever baryon particles are involved and last but not the least there is another quantum number which is known as the strangeness quantum number this is called strangeness quantum number because it is associated with particles that has a different kind of a what you can say strange behavior so scientists when they were looking at different kinds of interactions in the last hundred years around 1950s or 60s they found that there is a large number of particles which were created that behaved in a very strange manner that were produced by either strong or electromagnetic interaction but that decayed via weak interaction and those particles scientists named as strange particles and there is a quantum number associated with those particles also which is known as the strangeness quantum number. Okay, so almost half a century ago scientists were studying uh, the creation of newer and newer particles right so whenever you look at cosmic rays when they enter the earth's atmosphere it leads to the creation of a large number of subatomic particles or whenever you study high energetic uh, particle interactions in particle accelerators you end up getting newer and newer particles so when uh, scientists were studying the byproducts of extremely high energetic uh, particle interactions then they found out that newer and newer particles were being created that be behaved in a very strange manner that is why uh, 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 this number is called strangeness number so they behave in a strange manner in this particular way they were created via electromagnetic or strong interaction but after they were created they decayed via weak interaction so these strange particles are subatomic particles which are created via strong interaction or electromagnetic interaction but they decay via weak interaction now as it turns out uh, when we study these kind of strange particles we can associate a, a quantum number known as a strangeness quantum number with these particles that remain conserved at least in their creation if not in their decay interactions so before i talk about the interactions specially let's look at different kinds of particles okay so here i have a bunch of what is called hadron particles okay so the the the, the essentially the strangeness quantum number is a result of the strange quark so you see the hadron particles are made up of quarks right mesons are made up of two quarks baryons are made up of three quarks and there are different kinds of quarks you have up quark down quark strange quark charm quark top quark and bottom quark the strange behavior of the these particles are essentially for those particles that contain what is known as the strange quark so hadron particles that do not contain the strange strange quark like neutron proton and pi meson they have a strangeness number of zero all right but let's look at the lambda particle so lambda particle has a strangeness number of minus one this is because its configuration has one up quark one down quark and one strange quark so essentially all the quarks have a strangeness number this is what a strange quark has a strangeness number of minus one the rest of the quarks has a strangeness number of zero okay so the strangeness number is associated with the strange quark which has a value of minus one the other quarks has a strangeness number of zero and on the other hand the antiparticle for the strange quark has a value of plus one okay so whenever you have hadron particles created by the strange quark you end up getting some kind of a strangeness number so the lambda particle which contains one strange quark has a strangeness number of minus one Similarly, you can have uh, sigma particles, sigma plus, sigma zero, sigma minus. So superscript basically tells us about the charge. It also has a strangeness number of minus one because if you look at their configuration, they contain one strange quark each. Okay, so this is the configuration for sigma plus, this is the configuration for sigma zero, and this is the configuration for sigma minus one. Now, if you look at the xi particles xi zero and xi minus one they have a strangeness number of minus two because they contain two strange quarks 
the xi zero has up quark and two strange quark and the xi minus has one down quark and two strange quark so it has a strangeness number of minus two and on the other hand the omega particle which contains three strange quarks so the omega minus is com composed of three strange quarks has a strangeness number of minus three now apart from these baryon particles the pi meson as well as other meson particles can also have a strangeness number the pi meson is not made up of a straight quark so it has zero but what about k on particles k on particles are mesons that means they are made up of two quarks so k0 is made up of one down quark and one anti strange quark while k plus has one up quark and one anti strange quark so the anti strange quark has a strangeness number of plus one okay so these two particles have a strangeness number of plus one on the other hand k minus will have a strangeness number of minus one so the strangeness quantum number is conserved only in those cases which involve either the electromagnetic ray interaction or the strong interaction so interactions which involve electromagnetic force or the strong force only in those cases the strangest number is conserved but whenever we look at decay processes where uh, uh, the particle may decay into further particles in those cases where a weak interaction is involved the strangeness number is not conserved it may change if it involves the weak interaction so let's look at a few examples so for example here i have two interactions that involve a mediation by either a strong force or an electromagnetic force right so in these cases the strangeness number is conserved so a proton and a proton may collide in particle accelerators to create further particles like let's suppose a lambda naught k on naught particle and a proton and an anti pi meson okay so if this kind of an interaction is happening let's say uh, uh, we want to check for the conservation of strangeness number so we can apply these uh, numbers that I have associated with these different particles and put the values there to see what's going to happen now before I apply the strangest number let's apply the first the baryon number right which I discussed earlier so baryon number for a proton is 1 right in the case of a proton it is 1 right now the lambda naught is also a baryon particle so that also has 1 k naught is a meson particle so it has a baryon number of 0 pi plus is a meson particle so it is a baryon number of 0 now if you look at the strangeness number protons have a strangeness number of 0 right uh, the lambda naught has a strangeness number of minus 1 okay k naught has a strangeness number of plus 1 all right proton has a strangeness number of 0 and pi mesons have a strangeness number of 0 so as you can see the baryon number is of course conserved left hand side 2 right hand side 2 the strangeness number left hand side 0 right hand side 1 minus 1 0 so the strangeness number is also conserved in this particular case now let's go ahead and look at this next interaction where a pi meson or an anti pi meson interacts with a proton to create this kind of a sigma particle and a k1 particle okay so again i can associate the baryon number here so the baryon number of a pi meson is 0 for a proton it's 1 for a sigma particle it's one for a k on particle which is nothing but the meson it's zero and the strangeness number for a pi meson is again zero for a proton is again zero for a sigma particle is minus one here and for a k plus particle is again plus one so as you can see the barrier number is one left hand side one right hand side it's conserved so strangeness number is zero left hand side zero right hand side it's conserved so in these interactions which are usually mediated by either a strong interaction or an electromagnetic interaction so a proton and proton colliding is basically a strong interaction and, and it also involves electromagnetic interaction and same goes for the next one in these kind of cases the strangest number is usually conserved but if we look at particles uh, like uh, the baryon particles decaying via weak interaction so if a strange particle decays via weak interaction then in those cases the strangest number is not conserved so again let's look at a few examples so here we have a couple of interactions that involve decays of strange particles via weak interactions now as it turns out in weak interactions the strangeness number is 
not conserved okay so if you look at this particular interaction where a uh, xi particles becomes a lambda particle and a pi meson so if you look at the strangeness number as it turns out the xi particle has a strangeness number of minus 2 right while the lambda particle has a strangeness number of minus 1 and pi meson has a strangeness number of 0 so what is the change involved here so what is this change in the strangeness number so minus 2 becomes minus 1 so it is plus 1 so the overall the strangeness number changed by a value of plus 1 the lambda not particle may further decay into a neutron and a neutral pi meson so in this case the strangeness number will have a value of minus 1 right and 0 0 okay neutron and pi meson have values of 0 0 for strangest number so in this case also left hand side minus 1 right hand side 0 so there's a change in the strangeness number by plus 1 right in the last case we have the sigma particle which also has a strangeness number of minus 1 it becomes a lambda particle which has a value of minus 1 and a gamma photon which is a strangest number of zero in this case however the strangest number did not undergo any change so there's a change of zero left hand side also minus one right hand side also plus one left hand side also minus one right hand side also minus one so as it turns out in the case of uh, weak interactions where strange particles or particles that involved a strange quark undergo decay via weak interactions then we cannot definitely say that the strangeness number is going to be conserved in some cases it is conserved in some cases it is not conserved they may change by either plus one or minus one so that is all this this lepton number barrier number and the strangeness number are basically a set of rules based on studies over the last 50 years which gives us an idea how different kinds of subatomic particles interact all right so out of all the chaos and diversity of different particle interactions we have got some idea about these numbers that helps us get some confidence about what is happening and what sort of interactions are happening what sort of interactions are allowed what sort of interactions are not, not allowed so before i finish the video i want to do a little bit of a test okay so i'll give you a couple of interactions some of which are allowed some of which are not allowed and you tell me uh, whether or not they are possible or not based on what we just now discussed okay okay so i have here uh, a couple of particle interactions uh, some of which are possible in nature some of which are not possible and think of this as a kind of a test based on what we just discussed in this video can you determine which of these are allowed which of these are not allowed which of these happen in nature which of these do not happen so let's look at them one by one okay so let's start with the first interaction a tau particle becomes an electron and leads to emission of an electron neutrino and tau neutrino okay we here we have to check the electron number and the tau number so if you check the electron number it turns out to be 0 1 1 0 right if you look at the tau lepton number it comes out to be 1 1 0 0 so the tau lepton number is conserved but the electron lepton number is not conserved the electron is being emitted along with an electron neutrino which is not possible so this is a reaction which does not happen in nature Let's look at the second one. A tau becomes a muon and a muon anti neutrino and a tau neutrino is produced. So we will have, we'll have to check the muon number as well as the tau number. So the muon number is 0, 1 for the anti muon neutrino minus 1 and 0, right? The tau number is 1 and 1, 0, 0 here. Can you see? Can you figure it out? So the muon number is conserved 1 minus 1, 0. The tau number is also conserved this is possible see right the next is simply pair creation a gamma photon becomes an electron and a positron so if i look at the electron lepton number the gamma photon has zero electron has uh, one and positron has minus one electron lepton number is conserved this is allowed so this is something that is allowed in nature let's look at the next one a muon antiparticle becomes a positron an electron neutrino and anti-muon neutrino is emitted in the process so here we'll have to check what the 
muon number and the electron number right so let's look at the electron lepton number first it is 0 minus 1 1 and 0 right for the positron the electron lepton number is minus 1 for electron neutrino it is plus 1 now what about the muon lepton number it is minus 1 because mu plus is the anti particle of a muon all right and the anti muon neutrino is also minus 1 and 0 0 here so here it seems that both are conserved minus 1 minus 1 here for the muon number and minus 1 plus 1 0 for the electron number so this is an interaction which is allowed let's look at this one this consists of protons and neutrons so we'll have to check for what we'll have to check for the baryon number in this case okay so a proton and a neutron under high energetic interaction leads to the creation of a proton and a neutron and an antipositron sorry antiproton all right so if you look at the baryon number for a proton and neutron it's one proton neutron is one antiproton is minus one left hand side two right hand side one this does not lead to the conservation of baryon number which is not seen in nature okay baryon number is always conserved so this reaction is not possible now let's look at the next one now this involves not only baryon particles but also strange particles the hyperon particles that contain strange quark so we'll have to look at baryon conservation as well as strangeness conservation okay now because a meson and a proton are interacting so this is a strong interaction so i expect uh, that uh, strangeness number should be conserved if uh, this reaction does indeed happen in nature so first let's look at the baryon number so baryon number for a pi meson is what zero for a proton is what one lambda naught is a baryon particle so it's one k on is a meson particle so it's zero okay let's look at the strangeness number strangeness number for a pi meson as well as a proton is zero and zero the strangeness number for a lambda is minus one but for k naught it is plus one so the strangeness number is conserved okay minus one plus one zero right hand side zero left hand side so this indeed is a interaction that is allowed in nature now let's go to the next one a anti particle for a pi meson so the anti pi meson becomes an anti muon and leads to the emission of a muon neutrino so here we'll have to look up muon lepton number right so the muon lepton number for a pi meson is zero for an anti muon is minus one and for a muon is one so this muon lepton number is conserved this is allowed now let's look here here we need to check both the lepton numbers for electron as well as the baryon number so the baryon number is one and one is conserved okay but what about the electron lepton number electron lepton number for a proton is what zero neutron is what zero what is the electron lepton number for a positron minus one right what is the electron lepton number for an anti electron neutrino minus one right the electron lepton number is not conserved left hand side is zero right hand side is minus two this is not possible so a positron and an electron anti neutrino will not be emitted together okay electron can be emitted with an electron anti neutrino and positron can be emitted with an electron neutrino but this is not going to happen so this is a reaction that does not happen at all finally we have this kind of a k1 particle proton leads to a xi particle and another k naught all right so here we'll have to check the baryon number the baryon number is zero for k naught k minus which is a meson particle one and one and zero okay so the baryon number is conserved but what was the strangeness number the strangeness number for k minus is basically equal to minus one for a proton is equal to zero for a, a xi particle if you remember from my table previous that i've showed is minus two and for k naught is basically equal to plus one so strangest number is minus one left hand side and minus two plus one is also minus one right hand side so strangest number is also conserved and i see that this is a strong interaction so therefore this reaction is possible so as you can see um, here I had a set of different kinds of particle interactions and by applying the lepton number conservation, the baryon number conservation and the strangest number conservation for strong interactions, I can figure out which one of them are allowed and which one of them are not. So in a sense, these quantum numbers give you an idea about which of these particle interactions do indeed happen or not so in a way giving you a clue a kind of a confidence in the chaos of particle interactions so that is all for today thank you very much